High energy laser weapons um, have a significant number of advantages um, and when they come into service, um, armed force will be able to benefit firstly from their low cost. Um, the low cost per shot ratio means that you will no longer be in a position where you're using a missile that can cost up to millions of dollars um, against a weapon system that can cost around 30. Um, instead, using a weapon that can be done for as little as $15 per shot um, for an, or for a naval application, 57 cents per shot because you're, all you're really relying on um, is the power generation. So if, in a land-based scenario, this is uh, fuel on a generator, um, and in naval applications, um, the fuel's already built into the, to the system there. Um, other advantages are a deep magazine. Currently, once interceptors are, are fired, um, you're depleting your, your stocks. Um, for a naval system, that means that you only have so many weapons you can fire, and this does impact the effectiveness of the, of the ship. A laser weapon can be fired an infinite number of times, therefore you've got much more possibilities and you don't need to withdraw um, in order to reload and you also reduce logistics burden. Whilst laser weapons haven't entered full-scale production yet, there have been a number of major milestones that have been achieved. The biggest of these is the US Navy's laser demonstrator, which has been operationally deployed on board USS Ponte. The Lord's weapon system consists of six 5.4 kilowatt laser beams that are combined to form a 33 kilowatt effect. Uh, this has been used against various targets um, in, in trials against a scanning eagle UAV, for example, whilst also engaging an RPG launcher on a moving ship. The next step for the US Navy would be to develop a 150 kilowatt laser, and this has been done by Norfolk Grumman. Once that's done, that will then be potentially deployed on the Aegis destroyer. Um, and that's where we might see production taking place. Elsewhere, Rheinmetall have demonstrated a 20 kilowatt laser on board the MLG-27 gun mount. This is expected to enter service um, in the next few years, but it does depend on the level of funding from Germany. Um, in the UK, um, they've just launched their new um, laser systems program with a request for information being released last year. Um, this is expected to see a demonstration in 2018 of a sea-based weapon system. The US Army have been running the High Energy Laser Mobile Demonstrator program for many years now, and in 2014, Boeing demonstrated a 10 kilowatt laser against a mortar round target. They're currently developing a 60 kilowatt laser with a plan to then move towards 100 kilowatts, so you can see that the power of the laser system is increasing and, and will get to a level in a few years' time where it can be used operationally. In the meantime, Lockheed Martin is developing a 60 kilowatt laser under the Robust Electric Laser Initiative program, or RELI. This is made up of six 10 kilowatt modules, so in theory this can then be upscaled to 120 kilowatts. It's likely that this system may then be used with HellMD to actually create the um, system the iron will use, but obviously this will be subject to competition um, later on down the line. In the air, DARPA have been running the HALEDS program um, since 2001, and this is intended to field 150 kilowatt laser, electronic liquid pumped, rather than a solid state system. The advantage of this is that it's lightweight, with less than five kilograms per kilowatt of output, and this means it can be used on aircraft, and for example, on an AC-130. Um, General Atomics are the prime contractors for this system, um, and at the moment it hasn't actually been tested in the air. It is currently a, a ground-based system. The challenge will be to actually field it on an, on an aircraft and test it against targets on the ground. However, the US Air Force is very keen to actually use the, the system um, and it does see the offensive capabilities of such a weapon system. The US Air Force's most ambitious development program is SHIELD, and this is intended to field a 100 kilowatt laser on board a combat aircraft mounted inside an external pod. This will then be used against incoming missiles and threats in the air. This is a massive challenge because um, of the size and weight issues associated with using a weapons pod. All this technology has to actually be situated inside that pod itself. So it is unclear at this time whether that will actually be achievable. On the current timelines, we'll see a demonstrator in 2022. However, the US Air Force haven't had a great level of success with airborne programs. If you think back to the airborne laser program, it may be the case that this program is delayed. Um, so we will have to wait and see on that. Since 2006, a total of 1.8 billion US dollars has been awarded for the development of high energy laser weapons. The largest of these contractors is Norfolk Grumman, who have received 1.1 billion US dollars, and this is largely due to their involvement in the Airborne Laser Program, 
where they developed the Chemical Oxygen Iodine Laser, or COIL. This program has since been cancelled, however, Norfolk Grumman leveraged their laser expertise to then develop the Maritime Laser Demonstrator, which was a $78 million contract, and have since been involved in the US Navy's latest weapon system. Boeing and General Atomics are the next market leaders, with $192 million and $154 million respectively, and this is for their work on the HALMD and HALADS programs. As you can see from the chart, spending has become much more focused since around 2011, where you can see the programs maturing. Initially, spending was widely dispersed amongst tier one and two and, and three contractors, um, but also academic institutions as well. As we get to the level where technology is maturing, the major prime contractors are now taking the majority of the funding. The 2016 to 2025 high energy laser weapons market in the US is expected to be worth 1.4 billion US dollars. In the initial years, this funding is largely being concentrated around Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Norfolk Grumman, who are working on the programs that I've already spoken about. However, once we get to around 2018, we start to see competitions taking place and a much more competitive environment. The largest opportunity is expected to be the shipborne laser, which, if installed on the DDG 51 destroyer, will be worth approximately 449 million US dollars through 2025. At the same time, the US Air Force Special Force Commander expects to deploy Halads, and we should see a ground-based US Army laser system around 2022, whilst SHIELD, if it does get off the ground, should be seen around 2023.